Hello watch people, this is Hector from Winding Crowns and today we have a review, the Jack Mason Strat Old Timer. Now this actually is the prototype, but it's 99.9% .9 done. There's just gonna be a few little tweaks to it and I love what I saw. Peter from Jack Mason, he's actually the designer of these watches and a founder, he actually comes up with all the designs. And I was lucky enough to be invited to the unveiling, if you will. It was like a little party or whatever you want to call it. I was there. Mark from Average Bros was there. Shane from Relative Time was there. And Josh from Horology Insanity was there. And we got to premiere this watch. We got to actually look at it firsthand and see what we thought of it. I knew the watch was going to be a home run but I didn't realize how nice the watch was actually going to be. There's going to be a few little tweaks, but honestly, the watch could go out the way it is right here, and it would be just fine. But there's going to be some little things he's going to add. It's just going to take it up, you know, a notch. So here is the prototype. And, and I'm sorry, guys, the festivities were actually about three weeks ago. And I've had this watch and hadn't had a chance to review the watch. I am behind on videos. The camera has about eight videos on it that need to be put on YouTube. Plus I have a bunch of watches that need to be unboxed and reviewed. But this being a hometown company, because I am in the area of Dallas, Texas, this is a Dallas, Texas micro brand that I really, really enjoy. And yes, I'm biased because they're from my backyard. But also, I do love their designs. And now I realize it's because Peter is a designer. And he worked for Fossil Group and many other uh, as a designer of watches. So here it is, guys. Now, I'm going to be real specific with this watch because it's not just another GMT, guys. So, all right. Where should we start? There's so many good things on this watch and hardly anything bad about this watch you're going to see why first of all guys let me go ahead and zoom in so we can get into the specifics of this watch and you're gonna notice i get excited but there's a reason for that right now everybody and their grandma is is so excited about the nh34 gmt movement the seiko just came out with uh, all the micro brands got their hands on it and they're using it because none of them had a GMT. If they did have a GMT, it was in quartz, which anybody can do a GMT in quartz, right? So that's easy and the quartz movements are easy to purchase. You can get them in bulk. So of course, GMTs, everybody's had one, including Jack Mason. When Seiko came out with the H34, the, which uh, is the variant that you use in, in watches that aren't from Seiko, right? Uh, the NH34, everybody jumped on it and everybody's putting one out and there's nothing wrong with that. It's real, real cool, but they're not true GMTs. And that to me, it doesn't matter, but to a lot of guys, it does, you know, being a GMT an office GMT, right? It's just basically, or even the uh, Swiss uh, GMTs. I have one in my Batman Tag Hoyer Aqua Racer. It's called the Caliber 7. It is like a $3,500 watch, right? But it's not a true GMT. And it's a, a Swiss made, either Eta or a Salita in there. But, and I, and it's, and it's just fine, guys. It's just fine. I'm not knocking those movements that aren't the true GMTs. Neither am I knocking the NH34, right? I'm sure it's a cheaper movement and it's accessible to most micro brands. This Miota is only, I believe, in the Bolovo, but not many companies, right? They're still working with that. Jack Mason was actually the first micro brand to bring it out. They were in a hurry. Let's get it. They were the first ones to get it. Let's launch it. Let's launch it. And here it is, guys. Now, where I believe that they're going to shine is that this true GMT is going to be un right under the 1K mark. It's going to be 999. Look at what you're getting for that amount. I believe that all the other micro brands, when they do get this Miota, uh, jump hour GMT and they get their hands on it. I believe that most of those brands will be in the seven to a thousand dollar range somewhere in that window. I mean, cause you have the Seikos in the fives 
the non-true GMT movement. They don't have sapphire crystals. They don't have screw down crowns. They only have a hundred meter water resist. Uh, I believe the new GMT Seikos did put solid end links in their watches, which for, forever they were just rolled pieces of tin. But basically it's, it's just a uh, 5KX with a GMT movement, right? And you're there in the 450, $500 range, okay? This is not that, guys, okay? This is not that. Let me tell you what this is, okay? It's a 40 millimeter case. Let me get my calipers. You're going to see these dimensions. The bezel is 40 mil, depending on if you get it inside the groove or outside. Okay. The case is 39. So the case of the watch is actually 39 and the, the bezel is 40. You can see from here, the bezel protrudes slightly so when you look at your wrist and you see this you're seeing 40 mil but that's the bezel the watch is 39 so it wears like a 40 it wears like a true 40 which for a lot of people that's going to be great i have a 7.5 inch wrist and this thing wears perfect so for you guys with smaller wrists it's going to be great guys okay so it's a perfect dimensions you have a turtle like case i don't want to call it a turtle because it's not exactly a turtle but it's very similar to the the turtle seiko did not come out with the turtle case okay that case shape has been around forever this case shape has been around forever a lot of vintage watches have this case shape so seiko is not it's not theirs right but it has that you know similar shape of course the turtle kind of ducks down here this one does not so it's not a, it's not a turtle case, but from above it has that resemblance, which, like I said, many vintage watches. You look at archives and pictures, Google vintage divers, and a lot of divers have this type of case. A lot of them have like a skin diver case. So it's a very very retro inspired case. But I love that they they went with a forty mil. Is what you see on the bezel, thirty nine on the case. Also like the fact that their first watch they decided is going to be the Pepsi. I believe they're putting out two other different colors. Uh, but this is, I believe this is gonna be a very popular because obviously, you know, the Pepsi bezel has always been very popular. But I want you to notice you have brushed lugs, tops of lugs. You have high polished sides, as you can see, you have a signed crown with the Lone Star logo. That's they put that on all their crowns. Look at that bezel. Beautiful grip on that bezel. You have it goes either direction because it is a GMT. And yes, guys, if you're wondering, it lines up. Okay. It is easy to turn, and let me tell you why. Even though it's high polished as you can see it is not on the sides it is actually brushed see that you see that part of the bezel that's brushed and the top is polished so what you see from above is nice and shiny and blingy but when you go to grip it and you actually grab hold of it where your skin grabs it's brushed see that so high polished on top brushed on the side of that bezel makes it very easy to turn. I like that they did that. So what you see will be shiny, but what you grab will be brushed. Love that they use this very beautiful blue. I'm going to hit it with a flashlight just so you can kind of get, look at, see that? That is a very nice, very deep, beautiful electric blue. Look at that. It looks in some lighting it looks black and then it goes blue very beautiful in the sun and bright lights the bezel of course you have blue top and a very dark red almost like a faded maroon for the bottom half very nice you have very nice big indices all the way around 
you have screw down crown guys and the screw down crown gives it 200 meter water resist guys the Seiko with the uh, GMT movement is not screw down and it's only 100 meter this is screw down with 200 meter water resist let me move that out the way so you can see you see that look at those big indices they are framed very nice shiny frame the date is also very nicely framed guys with a white date wheel and a black number you have your hash marks all the way around Th these indices are full of loom guys so that's not an issue at night you have a lot of loom there now look at your hands very very nice rectangular hands you have that running seconds lollipop with loom and then of course the tail end of that seconds hand has the blue white red or you should say red white and blue and that is the texas colors and they do that to all their seconds hands so that's a very nice touch and it matches very well with the blue red of this gmt you have the applied logo now a lot of people i used to hear a lot of people say they can't get over a watch having a man's name on it i'm neither here nor there on that i could care less right but i do understand a lot of people in that camp my brother-in-law is one of them he can't get over having christopher ward jack mason uh, Daniel Wellington, uh, I mean, whatever, right? Raymond Wall, um, just there's tons of it. Ralph Lauren, there's on and on and on and on names of guys on the dial. Some people don't like that. Well, Jack Mason wasn't going to miss the opportunity to sell to those guys and let them enjoy their product based on that one thing. So they decided, no hard feelings, we're just going to use our logo. So there goes the applied star logo at 12 o'clock no more name on the front you will have it on the back of the watch but you will not have jack mason going forward on any watch with the name you will have their logo and that will tell you that's a jack mason watch and i think it's very well done and it's nicely applied just like the star on the big crown there now at six, you have the straddle timer, which is the name of this model. You have automatic GMT 200 meter. And yes, like I said, 200 meter water resist is great. This is not even supposed to be a diver, guys. Yet, they went with 200 meter water resistance in a screw down crown, something Seiko did not do. And those watches are selling out like crazy. They can't keep them in stock. Everybody and their grandmother has one. Nobody minds paying the 450 or whatever the dollar amount is for those watches. And they have a, you know, nice movement, but it's, you know, nothing spectacular. But it hit the scene and everybody had to have it. Every micro brand has it in their watches. And Jack Mason waited for the opportunity to get a true GMT in there, a jump hour GMT, which Miyoto did. So as you can see, the execution on the indices, the hands, the seconds hand, the framed window, the applied logo, the script on bottom, it's all very classy. Now, the like I said, the bezel is just done so, so well. Now, also, instead of just using a regular flat sapphire or even slightly domed sapphire, they went with this higher dome, more top hat type of sapphire. It is double domed. That's why right there, you see how you see no distortion? You can still see the date window, and the indices without them blurring because this is a double dome sapphire crystal. But from this view, it looks like it's a plastic crystal, like it's a um, acrylic. That's the look they were going for. Why? Because this is a vintage inspired piece. This watch is supposed to be vintage in its sizing, vintage in its cushion type case vintage in its aesthetics vintage in its indices the hands it's supposed to be that you know have that vintage retro vibe and back then watches would have um, acrylic crystals that would bubble like that so they went with that and i think it matches perfect also guys i mean 
solid M pieces, and you say, that's a Jubilee. No, it isn't. Look closely. The Jubilee style bracelet would have this piece, and then they would have three small polished links, and then the other piece. This has five rows in between, and then the two outer. This is a seven piece Jubilee style, not a five. Look at your Jubilees on every other watch that you have. You'll notice it's a five piece, this is a seven. So the flex on this is so, so nice. The clasp, very well done, fully milled guys with their signature on it. Dual pusher, release, nice and high polished, completely milled. But I'll get to this because that's going to be another upgrade. Look, it's got plenty of micro adjust, that four micro adjust there. It's just a beautiful watch, guys. Look at that. Just look at the case back here. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit more. What do we have? Assembled in the USA. Designed in Texas. See that? And there you go. Japan. Miyota 9075. What does that say? Let's see if I can make that out, guys. 24 joules. See that? 9075 Miyota. You have 360 nail stainless steel written on there. Sapphire crystal. Automatic GMT. And then the model number yet to be written there, JMXXXXXXS, because this is a prototype, 200 meters. It is held by screws on the case back. Why do they do that? Jack Mason, I talked to Peter, and he says the reason being is when you use a regular screw back and you screw it down, it doesn't always line up properly. So your emblem might be a little bit to the right, to the left, upside down because of the grooves of the threading, you never know how it's gonna land. Well, you avoid that by just doing it this way. Then it's always going to be, it's always going to be perfect because you place the case back on there and then screw it down with the screws. I really like that. You got all that high polishing there on the back of the lugs, the back of the case. Brushed on part of the case back and then high polished on the rest of it. Very nicely done. Yeah, the, is this watch guys and this sapphire, it's not only a sapphire crystal here, but this is sapphire as well. The blue and red and all those numbers are underneath, painted underneath. There's loom under there as well, but then there's a piece of sapphire applied to the top of that bezel. So that is not ceramic, that is sapphire. Ceramic bezels, you have to actually etch the ceramic bezel and then inlay it with loom, right? Which is susceptible that it could come off, it could rub off, you can wash it out. Eventually, maybe the ceramic bezel can lose that loom because it's the loom is inside the crevices of that bezel insert, right? You avoid that by using a sapphire above it. Now the loom is underneath it. And also, I like that because aesthetically, if you think about it, a lot of the old vintage Rolexes and stuff like that would use that acrylic bezels that would have that shimmer to them that look like it's plastic. So that gives it a very retro vibe as well. So I really like that they went with the sapphire bezel insert instead of ceramic. And you have a 20 mil in between the lugs. And it tapers a lot, guys. It tapers down all the way. What does that say? 15.9 to 16. So it goes all the way from 20 to 16. That's an awesome taper. Now let's choose, let's look at the jump hour, guys. Okay, you say you unscrew it down. The first position is your winding, obviously. And then you pull again. Boom. There's your arrow. Time change, daylight savings, boom, boom. You, you flying somewhere a couple hours forward, you fly back a couple hours back, easy. You're running seconds till keeps going, your minute hand, everything keeps going. You pull all the way out 
And of course, that's where you get your time, your date change and all that stuff. But here's cool. Your jump hour moves, watch this. There's your date. That's how you change your date, guys. Look at that. Eight, nine, and so forth. That jump hour does two things. It does the time and it does your date. And of course, you want to fine tune it with a minute. You can just pull all the way out. And then, very easy. Look at that. Look how quick that movement is. Bam. Look at that. Look how fast that is. Then you just push it in, wind it a couple times or whatever. Push it in. You don't even have to do any backspin when it's in the 200 meter water resist. Now, let me tell you what they're going to do to make it even better. Peter said, I don't like that it has a slight play in the bezel. It's very slight. How, you, it's hard to avoid that, guys, because if it was a diving unidirectional bezel, it goes one way, so you shouldn't have any back play, but you can fix that. But this is a 24-hour means It's supposed to go both ways. So it's easy to have back play on these bezels because it's made to go two ways. So he's going to try to tell it tighten the tolerances so that you have no back play. It's very slight and minimal. I wouldn't care because it's so slight, but he does and he wants to tighten that up. So your production, your production model, if you make the purchase will be even tighter of a tolerance on that. Very slight change, but I wanted to mention it. Another thing is it's a prototype. He wants the, the crown for the action and the feel in your hand to be a little smoother. So he's gonna make sure that that's nice and lubricated so that it's a nice and smoother experience. I think it's fine, but he wants it to be a little smoother for you. So he's going to lubricate that and make sure that it's a nicer, smoother experience for the wearer. Awesome, you can't hate on him for that. Very slight change, but he's gonna do that. So, so far, I hope you like these little changes. Uh, this clasp is perfect. I don't want Peter to change it at all. He gave us plenty of micro. It's very thin, fully milled, right? But no, it's, it's going to extend just slightly. And I saw the prototype. It's going to look just like this, but maybe come out to about right here, just a little longer. Not much, just a little bit. Why? Because he's going to have an extension where you can just press it, undo it, and slide it. So instead of having these four micro adjusts, it's just going to adjust from underneath, lock into place, and there you go. On the fly micro adjust. So it's going to be just a little, a hair longer and have that mechanism underneath for the same money. For the same money guys so that's a, a welcome change i like it the way it is but he's going to do that so i'm sure i'm going to love it i already saw a prototype with it and it's awesome one last thing the rotor they are going to go ahead and customize that rotor with the jack mason logo and some like american flag type striping so it won't be so plain it's already got some nice Geneva striping. As you can see, that Miyota. See if I can get it. You see that Miyota movement? You've got some real nice striping there. So it's already the bead blast, the striping. I think it's a very pretty movement already. You have your jewels. See that bead blast on the back? And you have right there, you can see some striping. Beautiful. It, it, it's not a plain Jane Miyota, but. The only thing lacking that it does look a little plain Jane is the rotor and he's going to fix that and that's going to be decorated. So your whole back is going to look decorated all for the same money. So those are the little tweaks that he's going to do. I think he hit this one out the park. He, they swung for the fences on this one and they hit a home run. Look at the sizing guys, 7.5 inch wrist. And look at that. Let me zoom out 40 mil and it looks great. Look at that. I love this watch, guys. I've wore it for three weeks straight. And I'm going to send it to another reviewer, but I really don't want to. Let's check out that loom. Oh, one more thing. 
he, the loom is great, but he wants that bezel insert loom is to be even brighter. So he's going to get it even brighter. So you guys will actually get brighter loom on the production models. All right, guys, let's check it out. There you go. What do you think of that? And yes, it is as bright as you see on camera. The camera is not playing tricks on your eyes. That is exactly how bright it is. But he feels that the bezel insert could be brighter because it is slightly less bright than the indices in the hands. So he's going to take that up a notch. So you're going to get some. It's already fabulous loom, but it's going to be even better. So this watch, guys, 999 is going to be awesome. And at 40 millimeters, every wrist can wear it. No problem. And it's not going to be an NH34 on your watch. It's going to be a 9075 Miota. Very, very good jump power movement. You're going to start seeing a lot of watches having this movement, and they're going to be running around that price, maybe more. I already saw that the Boulder put out a watch that's uh, coming soon with this 9075 uh, Miota movement, and the thing is like 45 millimeters, guys. The thing is humongous. So nobody's competing with them right now. Jack Mason has cornered the market on this smaller GMT. So let's turn those lights back on. Now, if these companies do get a hold of this movement and they start making GMTs, gosh, I hope that they're wearable sizes. I don't want them to be huge monsters. You know what I mean? Be nice, classic designs like this one. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this content. Guys, if you do, please subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends about the channel. Hit the bell icon so you're notified of the next video. Hit that like button. It really does help the algorithm, and I really do appreciate it. And leave comments, guys. I enjoy engaging with you. I love reading your comments. What do you think of this watch? What do you think of the design, the look, the color, the dial, the movement, guys? What do you What do you think? Let me know. And uh, I like what Jack Mason are doing, guys. And thanks for being with me. And remember, never stop winding crowns. Mm-hmm.